SpaceX is hard at work perfecting the designs of its new Raptor engine, which forms the core of its massive rocket called the Super Heavy. Having been tasked with landing humanity on Mars by the end of this decade, the company is constantly making changes to the engine, which will eventually power its deep space transport. Let's take a closer look at a recent upgrade to the Raptor engine received, which may have changed everything. SpaceX was founded by Elon Musk, a South African-born businessman and entrepreneur. At age 30, Musk made his initial fortune by selling his two successful companies, Zip2, which he sold for $307 million in 1999, and PayPal, which eBay purchased for $1.5 billion in 2002. Musk decided his next major venture would be a privately funded space company. Initially, Musk had the idea of sending a greenhouse dubbed the Mars Oasis to the Red Planet. His goal was to drum up public interest in exploration while also providing a scientific base on Mars. But the cost ended up being too high, and instead, Musk started a spaceflight company called Space Exploration Technologies Corp, or SpaceX, now based in the Los Angeles suburb of Hawthorne, California. He spent a third of his reported fortune, $100 million, to get SpaceX going. There was skepticism that he would be successful, which persisted into SpaceX's first years. After spending 18 months toiling privately on a spacecraft, SpaceX unveiled the craft in 2006 under the name Dragon. Musk was already an experienced businessman when he started SpaceX, and he strongly believed that more frequent and reliable launches would bring down the cost of exploration. So he sought out a stable customer that could fund the early development of a rocket, NASA. His goal for SpaceX was to develop the first privately built liquid-fueled booster to make it into orbit, which he called the Falcon 1. The company experienced a steep learning curve on the road to orbit. It took four tries to get Falcon 1 flying successfully, with previous attempts derailed by problems such as fuel leaks and a rocket stage collision. But eventually, Falcon 1 made two successful flights on September 28, 2008 and July 14, 2009. The 2009 launch also placed the Malaysian Razak Sat satellite into orbit. In 2006, SpaceX received $278 million from NASA under the agency's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services Demonstration Program, which was created to spur the development of systems that could transport cargo commercially to the ISS. The addition of a few more milestones eventually boosted the total contract value up to $396 million. SpaceX was selected for the program along with rocket plane Kistler, but RPK's contract was terminated with only partial payment after the company failed to meet the required milestones. Multiple companies participated in the COTS program in its early stages in funded or unfunded contracts. In 2008, NASA awarded two contracts for commercial resupply services. SpaceX received a contract for 12 flights, and Orbital Sciences Corp. received a contract for eight flights. The workhorse rocket of the SpaceX fleet is the Falcon 9, and one of its features is reusability. Falcon 9 hefts much more cargo than Falcon 1, at around 28,991 pounds, to low Earth orbit compared to Falcon 1's capacity of 1,480 pounds. The first Falcon 9 booster landing took place on December 21, 2015, and SpaceX now strives to make its boosters retrievable as a matter of course. They generally land on a robotic drone ship near the launch pad. Many of the Falcon 9 boosters have been used multiple times to reduce launching costs. A more powerful rocket known as Falcon Heavy made its debut on February 6, 2018, meeting almost all of its major milestones. Falcon Heavy successfully flew to orbit, carrying a Tesla Roadster and a space-suited mannequin nicknamed Starman. SpaceX ran a live stream of the launch in the Roadster's first few hours in space, which attracted attention from all over the world. The two rocket boosters landed successfully near Kennedy Space Center, as expected, but the core stage hit the ocean at 300 miles per hour, which was too fast, and it didn't survive the impact. Falcon Heavy then performed an engine burn in space that is expected to bring the Roadster at least as far as Mars orbit. April 2019 saw a setback for SpaceX when a test of the Crew Dragon spacecraft intended to bring NASA astronauts to space experienced a malfunction while on the ground. This created a smoke plume visible for miles around Cape Canaveral, Florida. The incident set back the company's timeline for bringing people to the International Space Station. That said, the company has recovered and has been bringing people to orbit with few issues since the debut crewed mission in 2020. The next and most crucial milestone for SpaceX was space station delivery. 
Dragon, riding a Falcon 9 rocket, delivered its first cargo to the space station in May 2012 under a test flight for the COTS program. The launch was delayed for a few days because of an engine problem, but the rocket lifted off safely on the next try. Space flight observers commended SpaceX's ability to send a cargo spacecraft to the ISS. Private spaceflight hadn't even been considered when the space station was developed in the 1980s and 1990s. SpaceX fulfilled the first of its regular commercial flights to the space station in October 2012. That flight achieved most of its objectives, but it experienced a partial rocket failure during launch. The failure ended up stranding a satellite. Orbcom OG2 in an abnormally low orbit, which led to the mission's failure. A new version of Dragon's cargo variant began flying in December 2020 and has executed all five of its planned missions successfully to date. Starship is the centerpiece of Musk's eventual plans to head to Mars. While the spacecraft remains in early testing, it is NASA's choice of craft to send Artemis astronauts to the moon no earlier than 2025. The testing program began with a smaller vehicle known as Star Hopper, which performed a series of tethered and untethered flight tests in 2019 and 2020. Then SpaceX began testing a series of Starship vehicles in high-altitude flights, starting with a cautious hop test of SNS in August 2020. One of the program's greatest challenges was executing flip maneuvers in mid-air, which led to the demise of several Starships before SN-15 achieved a soft landing on May 5, 2021. Starship is designed to launch into orbit and deep space aboard Super Heavy, the 230-foot-tall booster that holds roughly 3.6 tons of liquid oxygen and methane in its propellant tanks. Like all of SpaceX's boosters, Super Heavy is planned to be reusable. It will feature four grid fins to assist in controlling the booster's descent. The fully stacked Super Heavy and Starship were put together on a launch pad for the first time in August 2021, standing 395 feet tall. That's more than 30 feet taller than NASA's massive Saturn V moon rocket. This Starship Super Heavy version is set to perform an orbital test in 2022, pending a delayed environmental review of the Federal Aviation Administration of SpaceX's launch facilities in Boca Chica, Texas. The public response to the review added more data points than the FAA was anticipating, lengthening the process. SpaceX has customers from the private sector, military, and non-governmental entities, which pay the company to launch cargo into space. Although SpaceX makes its money from launch services, the company is also focused on developing technology for future space exploration. And Musk's dreams of flying to Mars are undimmed. In 2011, he told delegates at the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics in San Diego that he planned to take people to Mars in 10 to 15 years. Three years later, at the International Space Development Conference, he said the reusable rocket stage would be a step in getting to the Red Planet. In 2016, Musk unveiled his technological plan for Martian transport, which is a part of his plan to create a self-sustaining Red Planet colony in the next 50 to 100 years. The Interplanetary Transport System, as the rocket is called, is essentially a larger version of the Falcon 9. The spaceship, however, will be quite a bit larger than the Dragon, as it's slated to carry at least 100 people per flight. Musk followed up his announcement in 2017 by publishing a paper describing a future Red Planet city of a million people and providing more details about how the ITS would transport cargo and people. He further updated his Mars plans in September 2017 at an address in Australia. He didn't mention the ITS during the talk. Instead, he talked about a system called the Big Falcon Rocket. The spaceship that BFR will carry will be 157.5 feet tall and have 40 cabins for passengers, likely with a capacity of 100 people. Musk once again unveiled an update to his Mars plans in September 2019, renaming the first BFR to Starship MK1 and switching its outer coating from expensive carbon fiber to stainless steel. Starship continues to feature in Musk's Mars plans. In a February 2022 update, Musk said it may be possible to reach a launch rate of one Starship vehicle every six to eight hours and one super heavy rocket every hour on missions that would send up to 150 tons of payload to orbit. Such a high launch rate is expected to bring down costs, making Mars settlements more financially feasible. With such lofty plans for the future, a lot depends on the performance of the Raptor engines, which are at the core of every new rocket used by SpaceX. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states that Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow stage combustion cycle engine that runs on superchilled liquid oxygen and superchilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. 
The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The second stage, Starship, currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. Elon Musk has noted that in the future, the ship is likely to gain three more vacuum-optimized engines once they increase the length of the ship. Raptor is constructed from SpaceX's proprietary SX500 alloy, copper, aluminum, and steel alloys. There is no information to suggest that these have significantly changed between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. The engine relies on a small amount of 3D printing. However, SpaceX is trying to remove as much 3D printing as possible due to the inability to scale, high cost, and low manufacturing rate. One of Raptor's most impressive specs is its gimbling range. The engine can gimbal 15 degrees on the Y and Z axes, which is needed for the flip and burn landing the Starship does. A gimbal range of 15 degrees is a lot. For comparison, the RS-25 gimbals to 12 and a half degrees, and the SpaceX Merlin engine gimbals to 5 degrees on the first stage. At the beginning of 2022, the first Raptor 2 was spotted, marking the end of Raptor 1. After Raptor 2 production began, SpaceX stopped producing all Raptor 1.5 engines. Compared to the original Raptor, the Raptor 2 looks borderline incomplete. A large amount of plumbing and sensors have been removed, transitioning the engine from a Christmas tree look to a significantly cleaner look. On the original version of Raptor, while SpaceX was learning how to control the engine, a very large amount of development sensors were needed, allowing them to track pressure and temperature throughout Raptor's plumbing. Additionally, many valves were combined into valve plates, helping further simplify plumbing. By removing a large amount of these components, SpaceX has made the engine more flame and heat proof, a clear step towards SpaceX's goal of removing all engine shrouding from the booster, which would decrease the booster's mass by 6 tons. This is a clear example of Musk's the best part is no part mantra. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about NASA's new helical engine that breaks the laws of physics. Do you think SpaceX can get the Starship ready in time for the trip to Mars? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.